everyone, welcome back to SG Karma. So, Omoda is one of the newest brands to enter Singapore and this right here is the brand new Omoda showroom. And today, we're going to get a special opportunity to chat with Steve Hume. He is the Vice President and General Manager of Design for Cherry. So, we're going to talk about the Omoda brand, we're going to talk about design in general and we just want to learn more. So, let's go talk to him. Hi Steve, thanks for taking the time to sit down and talk to us, right? So I understand that you've been in the automotive design sector for a, a long time, right? You've spent a long time designing cars. So how, how does that come about? How does one get into drawing cars? Uh, I've been in this business for, I guess, uh, let's say a good 35 years. I'm a lot older than I look. <laughs> um, <laughs> having said that, I started off, of course, in Los Angeles. That's where I'm from. I uh, went to University of California, Los Angeles, dabbled in a little bit of physics, engineering, and then I took a little bit of art class because I was always into art. Okay, cool. There was a famous design department in mm. UCLA and they happened to offer a little class sketching cards, which again, I'd never done that before. Mm. Um, I was interested in art and design, but um, when I did that, um, the instructor took note and said, hey, you're, you're very talented. I, I graciously took that uh, <laughs> compliment. The next thing, you know, one thing led to another, um, and I found out that there was a very famous uh, car design school, mm. what's called transportation design, in uh, Pasadena, which is like the next neighborhood Stop to Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, it's called Art Center College of Design, and that's where pretty much 80% uh, of all the car designers come from in the world. And so it all started from there. Uh, graduated with uh, advanced standing. Uh, got hired by Ford. Um, of course, I got I got a lot of other offers as well, but uh, I, I ended up going to Detroit because that's where back in the uh, the 90s, that's where home it all started. Yeah, that's home where home you automotive. need to get your training. Yeah. Basically, that's what I was told. And so went to Detroit, but they ended up sending me all over the world, which was great. I lived a very expat uh, sort of life. So across that very sort of long timeline, right? You know, what are some examples of specific cars that have sort of popped out of your head, I guess? For Cherry, I mean, I, I've been responsible for pretty much, you know, 99% of all the vehicles that are coming out now. Uh, the E5, mm. which is uh, an all electric sort of a crossover vehicle. Mm. And we also have the uh, Omoda 9, which is a, a bigger SUV, mm. uh, p -head. And we also have the J6 and the J7, which are, again, sort of this uh, mid-size mm. SUV. One, one being, J7 being a little bit more sporty, and J6 being a little bit more rugged utility. Mm. Um, so it, it sort of, uh, you know, covers a broad range of bookends. Mm. For, for the brand coming into. And uh, I, I do want to zoom in right to that E5 that you mentioned because that's what, that's the first thing that Singapore is going to be getting yeah. from the Omoda brand. So from a design perspective, where does that start, right? Like, does it start on a blank piece of paper? Do you have specific inspiration when it comes to approaching, you know, a new car? It's a little bit of a balancing act. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from a design perspective, of course, we want to be as creative as possible and have creative input to marketing, to sales, even to just engineering leadership. Mm -hmm. To be specific on one of the models, mm. like the E5, uh, you know, we, we we have the key overall mission of what's what we call art in motion. You know, here here we have a piece of art, mm -hmm. automotive art, that needs to look like the best when it's in motion because that's what a vehicle is. I mean, you know, you, you want to have that emotional effect when it's moving on four wheels. And so, having that in mind, and we wanted to have this athlete in motion. Mm. If you show the, uh, the E5 uh, styling. It has a very aggressive, almost a very athletic visual feeling to it. Um, you know, the proportions, the stance, the uh, the aggressive look, and also the aggressive um, surface styling and form, and even the uh, the details of the lighting. So, were there like specific um, styling um, cues or details that you were particularly going for with the E5? Being a crossover for, I think, to to have uh, to influence the young at heart. Mm. Um, you know, we want to make it look like a, a. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen like a, a track race where you see an athlete yeah, leaning, <laughs> leaning, yeah. and that's exactly. Uh, what we're trying to achieve, we, we took the, we took some of those images, not just of an athlete, but also of, of like certain parts of nature as well, where like a leopard or a lion or a tiger were ready to, you know, attack. 
same sort of gesture. And so we take that gesture and try to put it into uh, automotive form. Mm. And so when we start off, you know, a side view of a vehicle is very important because you look, you're looking at the center line, the profile, and some of the lines that sort of support it to give that thrust and, and aggressiveness where some other vehicles are a little bit more team and more calm down and other vehicles are a little bit more like for example an suv is a little mm. bit more taller and more tougher uh sort of um gesture mm. so um for the e5 it was definitely more of a sportier gesture mm. that we wanted to go for as a crossover and I'm, I'm curious for your perspective and also maybe some some um, insight on your end right so if we yeah. look forward perhaps um yeah. Can you perhaps maybe share what, what the design future looks like for, for the Warner brand? And perhaps maybe in your perspective, we look sort of slightly wider out into the industry. What does the future of the design look like? Okay, so number one for the Omoto brand, I think we're always being a, a, a very young brand and a new brand. Mm. It, it's definitely going to be uh, more for the young at heart. It needs to project a lot more of a futuristic, more daring approach, whereas the other ones other models that we have, yes, we're going to have good, beautiful designs, but at the same time, we want we want to have something that's a little bit more solid that fits each brand mm. image. I yeah. do want to zoom out slightly, right? So you mentioned, I mean, you, you are from the, the Cherry um, Group and there are multiple brands, right? Yeah. So specifically with Omoda and Jeku, they are new to market for Singapore. I think new to market for a lot of people everywhere, right? right. And I think that probably speaks to the fact that Chinese brands in general are becoming a much bigger um, player uh, across the world. So, and we, well, we who work in the industry yeah. know that there are so many Chinese brands. Right. So how does Muda and Jayku position itself and differentiate itself in that sort of growing uh, mass of, of Chinese brands? The US and possibly maybe Europe, but more US where it was more of a bigger mass of automotive history and culture, right? You have, it, it went through a lot of different phases, mm -hmm. a lot of different vehicles, a lot of different uh, styling. Same thing with, uh, I think, China, but it's moving at a much, much faster. The trend is changing so fast, and that's what Moda and J.Crew is all about. It's mm -hmm. trying to really stay in tune with the, mm -hmm. the future young at heart generation that, that really stay with the trend and fashion and all that. And, and that's that's what Moda and J.Crew stands for. And perhaps just one one last question to sort of close it all out, right? So obviously, Omoda and J.Crew are new to market. So as, as we look for what do you think is the most challenging thing? And subsequently, what's most exciting about it for you? Cherry has many other new yep. brands, which uh, I was involved in. But for Moda and Jayku, again, being this young and daring brand, mm. that it gives us a lot more challenge for my team and myself to look at more um, alternative solutions, mm. which again, might not be possible for the other brands. Mm. And so that's that's where the excitement comes mm. in for me because maybe the future vehicle for a Moda don't have to look like a traditional mm. vehicle. That right? sounds exciting. Steve, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Guys, we've talked a lot about Omoda today. Enough about listening about the car. If you want to see the car physically, you can actually come down here to the new Omoda showroom to check out the new E5. So that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye. I get excited just going back to school to my alma mater and seeing all these uh, advanced and futuristic uh, visions from younger students mm. because they, man, they, they just have vision. Some things might be scary, but some things are very exciting to visually look at. Some of the ideas that they have, it's, it's just amazing. And hopefully those will all come true.